First up is Godzilla vs. Kong. It is out in theaters, but it's also available in the comfort and safety of your home on HBO Max. I am someone who has thoroughly enjoyed the Godzilla films leading up to this point. Kong Skull Island it was okay. I saw it once. It was fine. I had a decent time. I wasn't as big a fan of it as I was of Godzilla and Godzilla King of the Monsters. Obviously, these are based on older, older properties, and they just keep getting redone and redone. I don't necessarily have a problem with it, but... It's not like you're bringing something super revolutionary to the table each time. The very bizarre thing about Godzilla vs. Kong is I feel like it actually expected you to see the previous versions of both of these films. It's not that you're not going to get it going into it, right? Two big giant monsters duking it out. That's really at the core of this thing, but there is so much just absurd exposition and motivation for these creatures that I'm just like, this is, you're, you're trying too hard to make this into something it's not. I don't know if there was a single line of dialogue in this film that was not just exposition. It was, uh, I like the actors involved for the most part, but it just felt poorly, poorly executed on that front. But you're not here for the actors either is the other thing. It comes in under two hours. I think that was the right decision. There are many moments in this film that I was like, oh, you know, I kind of do wish I was seeing this in theaters because I think that just sort of adrenaline and the fun of being around other people who are excited for it makes these films more enjoyable. I have not gone back and watched Godzilla King of the Monsters on a small screen because it wasn't worth it. I had a decent time at the theater and, you know, laughed and and just never needed to visit it again. And I think this is one of those movies that really I'm like, oh, yeah, no, this is a movie theater movie. I feel like this was pitched as a bunch of really beautiful visual development art pieces strung together by poorly written pieces of exposition. Because, you know, somebody did a really gorgeous painting of like Godzilla in a certain pose or King Kong doing a thing. And they're like, oh, yeah, we got to make that into a scene. How do we get from that scene to the next scene? Uh, let's just have these characters talk about it. It stars Alexander Skarsgård, Millie Bobby Brown returns from the Godzilla movies, Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, Aiza Gonzalez, Julian Dennison, Shun Oguri, Kyle Chandler's back, Damian Beecher, Lance Reddick. Again, all of these are actors who I enjoy, but they're not really, I don't even know if acting is the right way to phrase it, but... Uh, you're not here for that. And that's okay, but then still deliver on great action stuff. And I don't feel like the action sequences quite delivered for me, again, acknowledging watching it on a small screen. I think it is hilarious and also embarrassing for them that the scale of Godzilla and Kong constantly seems to change. Like, I kept trying to track it throughout the film. I was like, okay, so right now Godzilla is taller than a tall skyscraper, and Kong in a previous shot is like two cranes large. So really, if they were, and, and anyway, at a certain point, you just have to sort of let go and acknowledge that you are along for the ride. And if you are going into it, not being willing to be along for the ride, you're gonna have a really bad time I think if you were someone who like me was excited in general for it and then started on the ride and we we're like oh this ride is not as good as the last few times um it's, it's okay again I, I think if you are fully vaccinated and really really miss the theater maybe this is worth seeing in a theater and and you really like these types of movies I, I'll caveat it with that if you are not fully vaccinated please don't go and yeah I mean watch it on HBO Max for sure if you are interested in this if you're not interested in these types of films like this is not going to help at all this is not going to be the one that convinces you yeah these types of films are really cool instead I would recommend a Pacific Rim or even the first of these Godzilla remakes I don't know if it's the director's fault. I mean, obviously, directors have a huge input into a film. Uh, studios, especially for a film with this big of a franchise, have a huge amount of input. I was looking up the director. I am not familiar with any of his work. That doesn't make him a bad director, and that doesn't make him undeserving of a franchise like this, but I guess it was a little unexpected for me. He mostly seems to have done horror movies. He did Blair Witch, which I think was the Blair Witch sequel. He did the film The Guest. Yeah, it's, I, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't amazing. I, as I said, the action is okay. There's just, some of it is just built into the structure of cool giant titans fighting each other. The rest of it is, I, I don't know. Overall, I think I personally am going to give this 2.6 out of 5, but I'm not saying that in a hard don't go see this movie film. I, again, I, I do think there could be fun to be had. Maybe drink a lot of wine or, you know, take some drugs if it's legal where you are. That might help a bit, but... For the most part, as a, you know, person watching The Sober on a regular-sized television, it was okay. 
The other film I have this week could not be more different from Godzilla vs. Kong. It is called French Exit. Technically, it came out a little while ago, but as we are in the still odd year, uh, things are rolling out on demand and more available. It stars Michelle Pfeiffer, Lucas Hedges, Tracy Letts, Danielle McDonald, Imogen Poots. And Michelle Pfeiffer plays this New York socialite who just sort of flees to Paris after she spends the last of her husband's inheritance. Lucas Hedges plays her son. I watched this in very close proximity to when I watched the film with Meryl Streep and Lucas Hedges, Let Them All Talk. And I was just like, what is going on with Lucas Hedges right now. I think he's a much better actor than the films he's being in. Not that this is a bad film. It's just a sort of quirky film. I mean, this is definitely Michelle Pfeiffer's show. It's dramatic in a way that sort of reminds me of Wes Anderson. I think there's like a freneticness about it that can be a little annoying depending on uh, what mood you're in but there are other times where it works this film is a little bit all over the place it's also supposed to be a character study but I feel like none of the characters really let us in as much as I would like there's still a barrier to it no matter what but I think if you are a huge Michelle Pfeiffer fan this is the movie for you. She She's very good in it. I think the movie doesn't necessarily live up to her performance in it. The other actors, again, they're trying very hard, although Lucas Hedges, again, I'm not 100% sure what he's doing, but it feels like some of this is based on direction he was given and not necessarily, I actually don't know. Also, there's a bunch of sequences on a boat again, and much like Let Them All Talk, which stars Meryl Streep and Luke, Lucas Hedges, I'm just like, did are cruise lines sponsoring a bunch of films now? Like, what is happening here? Either way, watch the trailer. I think the trailer is somewhat indicative of the tone of the film. If that seems appealing to you, go ahead and watch this. If it does not, stay far, far away because you will hate it. It's it's one of those films. I personally did enjoy it within reason. I, you know, it was better than some of the other films I was watching at the time. I was watching this over the holidays, so I was seeing all of the awards contenders. I think this wanted to be an awards contender and didn't quite make it there. But personally, I'm going to give it three out of five.